what is your net worth? Uh, are you a hustler millionaire or? Okay, I am a hustler. Chair, I am a hustler. My worth as of now should be 20 million. Okay, and uh, if you don't mind, you can just maybe give, just break the 20 million. We are not necessarily to the exact, but approximate uh, figures. Okay. And maybe to ask is, uh, I know being a government officer, uh, you have also been declaring wealth before, is it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe you can just, for, for the benefit of this committee, you can break your net worth of uh, 20 million, please. Okay, to start with, I own a shamba in Kedawa, around five acres. That one, if I estimate it, should be something like three to four million. I also own another plot in Kilifi, where I first started work. I also own a plot in Wasingishu, that's Eldoret one which is vacant, another one is already built, and the others could be the household goods, because as for us women, the household goods which are there are always ours. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> have you ever been charged in a court of law in the last three years? If so, you specify? No. Uh, have you, uh, now, you have been working with the county government of Wazengishu. Uh, have, have you ever been mentioned uh, in an investigatory report by the county assembly of uh, Wazengishu or any commission in the last three years? No, sir. Sure. All right. Uh, then I, I guess from there I want to invite uh, my colleagues, uh, maybe to interact with you. And I will start with the Honorable Majority Leader who is here. You cannot... Thank, thank uh, you very much. Uh, oh, sorry, Chair. Honorable. Sorry, Honorable Majority. Uh, nominee uh, Edna, you can note the, uh, the comments or the questions and then you, you will respond when you are given an opportunity to. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, Welcome uh, our nominee and congratulations for making it to be the nominee for uh, CEC help. Now, I've seen your CV and uh, I see that you have a lot of experience in public health. Now, uh, I would like to know what are the main challenges that are affecting the health sector? And uh, if you are given an opportunity to be the head of health services in Kericho County. What interventions uh, are you going to use to be able to provide solutions for the challenges that we have in the health, se health sector? Thank you. Chair. All right, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Congratulations, uh, Edna, on being nominated to the CEC Health Services. Health is actually a devolved function. And uh, the Department of Health is one of the revenue streams that leads in revenues in the county government of Kericho. But it has its own challenges. What plans do you have? if given an opportunity to be the CEC for health, to enhance more revenue from all our sub-county hospitals, referral hospitals, and the entire Department of Health. Number two, looking at your CV, you are actually a product of the bottom-up approach where you started with a certificate, diploma and degree. You will be heading a department where the doctors will be answerable to you. And we know the chain of command sometimes where doctors have got their own chain of command 
the nurses have got their own chain of command, the public health uh, officers have got their own chain of command. How will it be? How will, how will you work with the doctors? Will it not have a problem where the doctors will be reporting to someone who is not a doctor? Because sometimes you may ignore that, but it ends up bringing a problem where it will affect services in our hospitals. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. My next question, Chairman, is that I want to congratulate uh, the nominee for health services. Congratulations for getting that opportunity to appear before the, the this appointment committee. Uh, my question is, uh, going by your CV and what you've indicated, that you've been working in Wazingishu as a sub-county, probably sub-county public health officer, uh, that is heading a sub-county hospital. Uh, now that you've been entrusted this very critical docket by His Excellency the Governor, you will be traversing this Kericho County. And uh, don't you think that is an enormous job for you now that you are a sub county public health officer? Secondly, you've indicated, you've re you indicated that uh, you once aspired to be a member of parliament for Kipkelion East. Kikilion East sub county. But uh, you realize later on that politics is a tough um, field. You shun politics. Now that you are now entering into politics of the entire county, you will be dealing with the governor. You will be dealing with 30 elected members of the county assembly. You will be dealing with another 17 nominated members of the county assembly. Somehow you would be interacting with the members of parliament also because of health issues in where they represent. If you shun away politics, you never aspire to be an MP and you had interest, don't you think that uh, now that you are entering into the county politics, will you be able to handle the heat of uh, county politics? Thirdly, and finally, so that I don't speak chair, you are coming to a county where we have nearly 800 or more than 800 casual workers. That is on contract. We have around 800 on contract. What is your take? Will you confirm them? How, and if yes, when and where will you get the funds? Uh, thirdly, is that uh, drugs in our facilities are not there. We want to thank His Excellency the Governor the other day. I think he flagged out some drugs. But drugs has always been absent in most of our facilities. I know you know in where you come from, rarely do you find even an aspirin in a health center. What are you going to do to make sure that we have drugs 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 352 weeks in a year? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm proposing, uh, honorable members, that uh, the honorable Maritim and then honorable uh, Israel and then Rogon. From there, the nominee will uh, will respond to uh, maybe uh, the, the question. So, honorable uh, uh, Rogon. Uh, thank you. It, um, first of all, is to congratulate you, Edna, for making it this far. Uh, I'm only going to ask you two questions. One, have you acquainted yourself with the budgetary allocation to health? Because for, from uh, records, I'm told health is the, the, the department that takes the biggest allocation of our budget um, as a county. Uh, if that is the case, health is the worst you know, department in terms of service provision. Uh, have you exposed yourself with some of the challenges facing this sector? And lastly, we have um, problems relating to, you know, service delivery. When I talk about that, let me talk about the facilities uh, in our various sub-counties. 
we have some health facilities that do not have a substantive you know health work it will shock you i don't know what are the you know strategies that you'll have in place to ensure all our facilities have officers who are hired by the county thank you yes honorable marito thank you chair edna welcome I will, I will i will ask you as much as we are saying we are we are having shortage of drugs in our facilities we also have shortage of staff how will you handle that again we have people who are working in health, health facilities who are volunteers we call them community health volunteers they are not getting any salary and they work hard and they are very important people how will you handle them that what measures will you take to avoid cases of workers downing the tools as strike in our facilities thank you uh, thank you very much the honorable is wrong thank you chairman uh congratulations edna on your nomination to be appointed the cc in charge of health uh as we know that Health is a very critical department in our county, and which has uh, almost 34 percent of the allocation of the budget. And you know we have several uh, challenges which are which is facing health uh, health department, i.e. from uh, management and running of the uh, health sector. Do you know? I want you to highlight some of the challenges which which affect mostly the operation and the management of the health sector as a whole. Number two, and how and the solution you think we, if this committee find it fit to approve you, what is that impact or those the solution to those challenges? Uh, number sec second and last, are you are you aware of uh because you are a resident of this great county are you are aware of all the government health facilities in our county uh, i want you to highlight if you are if you know of any how many level 1 2 3 4 and 5 if you know of any thank you uh, thank you very much uh, so i will uh, i want to give you so that you can uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, give us your thoughts and maybe Uh, the responses uh but before then uh when the governor was opening this assembly uh, during the past sitting uh, he did mention that uh uh there is a proposal to build an oncolo oncology center at the Kericho County Referral Hospital um because of the challenge that we have uh, as we know that cancer is uh, as is the case is really as really gone up and it's a killer disease uh also aware that you come from uh, Kipkelion East where there have been a proposal uh, especially uh, in the parts of Londian to come up with Londian Refer Hospital uh, uh what are your thoughts on this should uh, we continue do we do the oncology here or it should be part of the referral and whether there is The, the, the plan of still uh, uh, establishing a referral is still in place and uh, it will be based in Londian as approved earlier in the last trip by the last regime so honorable members you will permit me uh, she tackles that and then from there i'll come to anita and uh, ruta and dominic uh, please uh, try to be brief okay so just possible thanks thank you chair and the team as a whole okay i think i will take up the questions as they came the first one are the challenges affecting the health sector and how i plan to resolve them 
through the chair. I've been also working in the same system since devolution. Health, health sector had some uh, is involved in some challenges, and challenge number one is the human resource, which is the main factor in health service is demoralized. That is number one. We have a workforce which is demoralized. And the demoralization is coming in in several ways, not one way. One, a good example of Kericho, we have staff who are on contract, we have staff who are now on permanent and pensionable. The same, same staff are supposed to over the same service. You will find that the ones on contract will not be willing to give it all while their counterparts who are earning the same, same, who are earning a bigger salary, they are serving the same, the same service. So at that point, this staff, there will be some kind of friction and how to arrest the situation is to strike a deal with the unions on our now to because i know already as we talk there's a budget for 2022 2023 though we are almost finishing the, the the second we are in the second quarter so we need to go and have a dialogue with the unions and have we strike a deal we confirm these people in stages because it will not be possible to observe all of them at once on permanent and pension because as you realize that most of the health though I'll now touch there is another question on health budget in health budget I've just seen the 2022 budget which was approved the health budget is around 2.8 million something now in that budget one point it's 2.6 actually billion but in that budget 1.8 billion is on salaries the recurrent years so you find that it is actually taking a huge sum of money on the the human resource part of it so we need to strike it so that we need to show our staff also that we are doing something for them. We don't leave them to be there just waiting who will come and save them. If given this position as the CEC Health, I would want to engage with all the stakeholders. One, the unions are our stakeholders because in an event that we don't agree with our staff, they normally go for these strikes. But once we have a striking balance with the unions, we will ask, have a memorandum of understanding and it will solve also most of our problems because when you are doing a memorandum of understanding with these people, as we are planning to put your people on permanent and pensionable and also to employ more staff, why can't you also be there to give a service to this Mwanaenji? Because when you go out there not giving a service, and the Mwanaenji is suffering. And in our code of ethics, we are supposed to be offering a service, not seeing the remuneration. The remuneration should not come first. So number one is to engage with the stakeholders. And also, budget, the health budget is small as compared to what it's supposed to take. So there comes in now another thing. We need to go for an extra mile to lobby for funds from donors so that we can equip our facilities it can assist us equip our facilities it can assist us also to do more of structures and infrastructure in our facilities so that whatever the county is offering will go mainly maybe to paying the recur for the recurrent and the buying of the drugs another challenge on the, another challenge of the 
the motivating factor for the the, the moral the staff moral we find that in any system sometimes you find other senior officers are being supervised by their juniors at the service delivery service. A good example could be maybe you find a senior nurse is offering a service in a facility while the in charge of the facility is junior. Those also sometimes they do, not unless there is a special request for such a nurse not to. So at management level, we need to know those things so that we don't demoralize our staff while thinking we are really supporting them. That is another point on the, the staff demoralization. Another point, as a county also, we need to ensure all our facilities are well equipped. We have the supplies. We have the commodities required because for a nurse, I can take an example of a nurse. A nurse at no point will handle a patient without gloves. So in an event whereby we don't provide these people with these commodities, there will be no service. And those are most, most the main challenges that is affecting most of our public health facilities not only Kericho, but now we are zeroing into Kericho, which now it's now at the policy level that we need to come up with proper priorities. As we are planning for our budgets, we need, we need also to do proper prioritization of our budgets and implementation as well. Because sometimes we do the planning, prioritizing, but the implementation pit also is missing. So as we move ahead in planning and also going out, out of our way to the partners to support us, we need to implement what we really plan. The next question was, what do you have to enhance the revenue? Yeah, and uh, the, the Edna, uh, let's speed up uh, in a summarized manner. Okay, uh, where thank we, you. Where honorable members, where you would feel that you will only need clarification. I do. We can, uh, all, all, of course, seek clarification from you here. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Now, on the issue of revenue, one, we do di digitization. Digitization we do from all the way from the inception up to the end product. What I mean by digitization is, as the patients come in, we need to capture their records well, and also what they are going through. So that in an event that, because I know where we are get the main source of revenue in a, in a health facility is through drugs, because that is the main source of revenue. And maybe some medical diagnosis, so the main thing that will assist there, us there is digitization. We digitize and also have CCTV cameras which are working in our facilities so that we capture to see where our leakages are. On the issue of the chain of command, we may, in terms of me being a public health officer, now coming in as a CC health and we have doctors, Personally, and even I know of many places whereby even nurses are being CCs, public health are being CCs in some counties. One of the counties has been Sholo. Currently, the CC for Nadi, who was there in the other term, and this term is a, a nurse. So, in health, we have 17 cadres. And in, among these 17 cadres, when it comes to the supervisory role, not the service role. Anybody can be a supervisor as long as you have what it takes to be at the managerial level. Thank you. Chair, on the political, I think that is the Honorable Chair from Mainamoy. 
you are talk, uh, you asked about I shun away from the politics. Chair, it wasn't really that I shun away from the politics from maybe the hate or anything. When the issue of resigning came in, I just thought of the people who are still depending on me, and I thought, supposing I don't get and I still have these people, I said, no, I'm not taking it. So it wasn't that I was afraid, no. I didn't want to lose that, what I had at that time, because of the people, they are depending on me. On the issue of casuals on contract, I think I have explained a bit of it, or now we are planning to observe them. We'll have a plan to put them in faces, because sincerely speaking, the budget we have will not accommodate to take all of them, but we'll have a negotiation, and through this house, if approved, I know if you can increase the budget for health, it is also my wish that these people get that salary because they have also dependents who are depending on them. Drugs in our facilities. If we use the same digitization method, because now we have a lot of leakages whereby if we cannot really tell how our drugs, we need to be monitoring. Because in a click of uh, nowadays, we have technology, and it is good to embrace technology. A very good example, in MTRH, they are using the same digital, and it's a public facility. Even us here in Kericho, we can employ the same, and at source, where our suppliers are bringing our drugs to Kericho, we can do coding. Say that in case of any leakages to any of the facilities around, or they, we suspect there are fishy things happening there, we can always track because they are coded. Chairman, on that note, Chairman, yes, uh, you know, in the previous regime, the county government used to pick drugs from the chemists that we have around. In the previous regime, that is the last five years, the county government had an arrangement where when there is no drugs in the facility, they just go to a chemist and they pick drugs in those chemists. You know, such an arrangement, you can never, you, you, you can never prove evidence that such drugs were supplied. I can tell you there was a lot of interest. The, the was a little bit, uh, when you say pick, uh, you, you need to clarify so that we can know when you say picking the, the, no. the county government use one pick what happens to be chair Paul so, so for, the, for the benefit of nominee to understand because um, she was not part of uh, she has not worked before uh, with this county government yeah so maybe to hit the nail on the head chair in the previous regime I don't know the kind of arrangements the department had they used to get supplies from the chemists that we have around. And not all the chemists. Some of the chemists belong to members of the county assembly then. So that is how serious it is. As you come into office, how are you going to make sure that we don't have such issues in our facilities? Because we will say this today, tomorrow, and forever. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. The one that was here, Peter. You, maybe you can make a comment on that as you, you proceed. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Okay, maybe on the same, the Honorable Chair, maybe what I can just say for that, I think if there is an integrity issue there, it can be handled at another level. But where I'm seated, I know there is a, the procurement way of uh, procuring our drugs. So always it's good to stick to that. But in case something like that happens to me, that one cannot be condoned. Where I sit, I can't. Thank you. On the budget, your point is that that is clear, is it? Even in the governor's manifesto, uh, uh, Edna, he has indicated that there will be zero corruption. 
So we hope that in case you are approved, uh, that should be the way to go. Continue with the proceed with the other responses. Through the chair, I think most of the questions were like there because there was another question which was coming in the name of challenges again, and I think I've addressed the challenges of health. There is now the shortage of staff, which in my early explanation, I think I captured most of them. The shortage of drugs is now maybe also the digitization will assist, and I think now I'll come, I want to talk something on strikes. On strikes, when you, before a strike occurs, there is a notice, because strikes don't just happen. Normally, I'm not so certain about the number of days, but it should be around 21 days you are given a notice. So, as the top management, it is always good to listen to these people. When you get there is a strike, then it is a wake-up call. Something is not good somewhere. Sit in a round table and agree on these issues. We don't wait until the last day when a strike is about to happen where you cannot agree because human beings' nature, we know all of us. There will be a lot of blackmails, which we can really avoid if we start, when you get a strike notice, you act on it efficiently. I can cite a case of 2016-17 in Wasingishu. There was a strike notice which was to happen. The strike notice came, but the strike never happened because the CC then took a prompt and involved all the unions and they sat and agree. And works. The work went well. So some of these things sometimes, if we can offer a listening ear to these people, things can work well for all of us. The challenges of management of health and the solutions. The challenges of health and how to manage them. In any hierarchy, it starts from bottom going up as our slogan of the, the Kenya Kwanzaa. Other, the people who are offering the greatest, and I can say this, are the people who are down there. And they are the people who are also look so much down upon. Personally, I grew from top, from down, coming up. And I can, I can tell you, I know the challenges which are down there and coming up. The challenges, the people who are down there, they sometimes even only want even to mingle with the big people, the big bosses, only just to feel they are part of the system. But when we disintegrate them, they feel it's like they are in another world and the executives are in another. What I'll come in with is one, we'll have will be organizing for retreats at the sub-county level because you cannot bring all the staff to the county, but we'll ensure we have retreats at the sub-county level whereby we'll involve the sub-county plus all the in-charges plus all the other staff at the sub-county level so that also we don't deny the Wananji a service at the expense of build, team building or something of the sort. By doing that, we will work as a team, because health 